Just like that. We back once again from the Lion City, y'all. It's the Asia Cup 2024 live from Singapore, from the OCBC Square, Singapore Sports Hub. We've moved into the evening hours, so the temperatures have cooled down, but we're about to turn up. You know when the Philippines hit the court, it's gonna be crazy around here. We know the, the stream is gonna be going crazy as well. They'll be first up on the list against Australia and what we expect to be one of the games of the day. This is how the game itself is played. On the half court, three team, two teams of three players, 12 second shot clocks. We go by twos and ones. First to 21 wins, 10 minutes on the game clock. That is the, those are the bones of the business. That is 3x3, that is what we're playing. Another outstanding edition of the Asia Cup. I am Kyle Montgomery, AKA the voice of 3x3. I'm here with Angelo Sakarakis. That's right, the czar alongside. We made it through half of the final day of pool play. Tomorrow, the quarterfinals begin, and we will hand out a gold, silver, and bronze medal here at the seventh edition of the Asia Cup. Here's how Pool C looks for the men. For Australia, they put it on Japan. 20 to 13 to start off the action in this group. Still two more games to go in this group. And the first of those two games is the Philippines against the Aussies. Philippines got a direct uh, ticket to the main draw, so it'll be our first time getting a look at this men's team. They'll come in locked and loaded. You see the Filipino faithful, loud and proud here at the venue. It's going to be, this is going to be crazy, Angela. I think that this is going to be one of the marquee games of the day. We know how dangerous Australia is, but you just never know what the Filipinos gonna bring. We, we're about to see. We're about to see the main factor for them to be alive is to sustain the physical challenge of slowing down the inside presence of O'Donnell and the outside shooting of Blanchfield. But guess what? They're not alone. You got Hickey. Hickey, 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 Hickey going crazy, crazy, crazy. He's doing it all in all kinds of ways. And I'm looking forward to see if the Filipino Puso is gonna have enough strength to shock everyone. We'll find out soon enough. Christopher Eximiliano, Grian Mendoza, Joseph Sodorifa, and Ruben Saldua representing the Philippines. Out come the guys in green. And these four dudes in green might be more dangerous than the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> now, you got you, you to define who's Raphael, who's Donatello. <laughs> Leonardo and Michelangelo taking the court now. So James. who's the pizza eater here? Who's uh, the guy? Uh, that's probably O'Donnell. That's probably He's O'Donnell. A few pizzas. You don't grow that big at 18 years old without having the proper diet. <laughs> a lot of calories uh, to get that high in the sky. Uh, anyway, that is their team. Todd Blanchfield, William Hickey, 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 Hickey. Joshua Samuel Davey, and James O'Donnell. That's such an official, proper name. James O'Donnell. Pretty good. Anyway, uh, Australia has been on a tear. On a tear from the qualifying draw all the way into the main draw. Not a shock, consider the success that, that this country has had at the Asia Cup. But every year, despite mixing up their rosters, speaks to the talent that they had there, they're more than competitive. They are automatically a, a medal contender. Meantime, there's Shirong Chi and Gain Kim that will be officiating this first game of the second session. Appreciate you guys for watching up to this point. Hopefully you've been rocking with us all tournament long. We've been having some fun. The games have been great, as they usually are here in Singapore. We're going to see if the Aussies can wrap up group play undefeated and head into the quarterfinals as maybe, maybe, maybe the favorite in the men's competition. Oh, I think you're you're playing it safe because that's your that's your job. And as a consultant, I can tell you they are. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the rest of the men's team. Nobody's been quite as impressive as Australia uh, to this point. But again, we haven't seen the Philippines play yet. Who knows how what they do? Well, Maybe. New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, Iran. Like you have some contenders, but Australia has been the most consistent and I'll say balanced team so far. Speaking of New Zealand, we we'll see the Aussie and New Zealand women go toe to toe. That's probably going to be the game of the entire day. So circle that one on your schedule for the rest of the rest of the day as the Aussies 
Strike first. Filipinos trying to get something going. Maximiano will miss it long, out of bounds it'll go. Should be possession green. As they get it to the athletic Hickey. At the top of the key. Hickey quick around. Leaves, leaves his feet, kind of a disjointed possession. I think he wanted to put it up top for O'Donnell. Correct. That was his look. The main, the main problem for the Philippines, it's a mismatch on all positions, virtually. You know what? I, I think a proper nickname for Hickey is the rattlesnake. Ooh, that man is dangerous. And I think there's a lot of rattlesnakes in Australia. Is that right? But does he warn his opponent? I'm not sure. Does he warn? Oh. Because <laughs> the rattlesnake is going to warn you. He strikes without warning. <laughs> That. Gave me something to think about there. I gotta admit. I, <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I like maybe the, messing up my nickname ideas with call logic. Him the Scorpion. I don't the Scorpion. want logic with, with <laughs> man. All right. We digress. Simoniano drops it down low. The runner off the glass. It's a tough yeah. score on the inside. As the Philippines respond. Well, if the Philippines wants to hope and keep their chances alive, they need to let this game go crazy. They need to impose an incredible pace to uh, tire out the Australians that are bigger, more physical, force them to have to guard you on the outside and, and uh, cover the closeouts. Prada trying to stick with Davey. As uh, Hickey will start this possession here for the Aussies. Blanchfield, the only returning member of last year's silver medal squad. Hickey on the baseline. He almost caught a body. Almost. See what the Philippines can pull out of a bag. Ooh. Red ball. Mitty. Money. Blanchfield took him on a drive straight to the cup. 2-2. And a whistle. Back to the action. Stepping right into that two piece. Oh, man. Wow. Eximiano. Philippines doing what they're supposed to do. Light it up from a distance and hope that it catches a wildfire. Blanche Phil falling oh. away. This man has stayed on like the porch light, continuing his sharp shooting from game one. Eximiano, he will miss the layup. 4-4, Blanche Phil drops it off. O'Donnell ends up with it. He elevates and scores as the Aussies assume a one-point lead. Nice move. We got to love the pace of this game, Kyle. Saldua. Oh, oh, this man, Blanche this man Phil. is dangerous. Every time he catches the ball, you better hold your breath. It was a narrow miss. What he doesn't handle outside, the big fella's going to handle inside. How there. about O'Donnell, man, with the soft touch? He's been showing that off today. I've been praising the young fella all tournament. For sure. It's, his skill set has been impressive and worthy of all the discussion as Blanchfield continues to get buckets like rain is coming. We awesome. mentioned how Blanchfield has been responding to that call every time he had that feeling that Australia needed a a push right away. They wanted to get his team on the right track. He did it the first game of the tournament in the qualifying draw, and he's doing it right now in the first pool play game. So the reef up, can't cash in. He's gonna get another chance, and that one is Dinero. Straight money, Blanchfield misfires that time. He's gonna get it back, get out his way. Wait a second. There's a whistle. They're gonna discuss whether or not this should be offensive or defensive. A 
defensive foul. Apparently, Blanchfield dropped that shoulder a little bit. And yeah. that's what earned him the whistle. We got a 7-7 tie at uh, 646. A good scoring pace to start this action. I like it very much. Me too. I tell you what, the main thing right now is that Australia is living off Blanchfield's real estate. He's going crazy. He's taking contested shot after contested shot, finding efficiency in a in a way that only he, he knows how. But the Philippines are putting the pressure on Australia to close out and stay close every time that the defense from Australia broke down. The Philippines just made them pay. You know, with both of these teams, these players respectively, most of them play a lot of five-on-five -five action in the pro leagues uh, in their respective countries. And uh, Benjamin Bergeronier, he told me to ask you, who's the GOAT of five-on-five? -five? Meantime, it's Sederifa setting things on fire outside. He hits the two. You can answer that question later. I surely the will. Game is still, the game is still heating up. Sederifa oh, lost yes. it inside. Oh, yes. And Simoniano. Throws the, throws the shot off. But Simoniano, he ain't done driving yet. He's still got some gas. He gets to the cup. Davey. Nah, bruh. O'Donnell. Don't worry, I got your back. He will score it on the rebound. The Philippines are putting such a pace to this game. Sederifa. Comes up abbreviated that time. Can Australia slow them down? Now it's Hickey's opportunity. Instead of taking the mid-range, he goes down low. Mr. Shorty got it back, and he knows what to do with it. Makes good on his own mistake. As the Aussies now pull within one. 10-9 contest. Set Arifa has been the hot, had the hot hand outside. Hickey with the thievery. Hickey, two ball, corner pocket. Not oh, at all. Yes. Smart. That's that's a high IQ play, though, from an 18-year-old. Oh, my God. O'Donnell re recognizing he could not get his hands on it and secure it, but he knew his teammate was nearby. Up top, broken up by the long arms of O'Donnell. <laughs> they're fouling because they're like, no, man. It's like, this place is too in insane for even us. <laughs> this, this game is played at a frenetic pace. This is 3x3. It's a 10-minute sprint. I tell you, it's uh, a really high-level game. I it's hope a you ain't asthmatic. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Andrada gets called for the foul. Having a tough time keeping up with James O'Donnell. Donnell over David. Blanchfield trying to get some space here comes through traffic he, draw, he draws the foul Blanchfield who poured in 30 points for the Aussies last year and route to that silver medal is the only returning member of uh, last year's squad everybody else is new to the game but they seem to be quick learners they picked it up pretty easily and it's uh, it's shown in the results so far here in Singapore Blanchfield will shoot, will splash, and the lead for the Aussies is now at 1-11-10. Five minutes to play. That's a huge turnaround for, for Australia that was led by four and that managed to take the lead back. And uh, the main key was for them to slow the game down a little bit. And Blanchfield with a high basketball IQ, reading the screens, taking his time. Oh, back outs. He's got plenty of iron in his diet in this tournament. That's all he's been touching. Hickey with the quickies. See you later. Meet me on the top floor. A lot of vitamin D as well. Because <laughs> he's dunking it like a madman. <laughs> oh, yes. Great recognition. Saldua doing his thing. Davey. Oh, too strong. There'll be some bubble wrap down there. <laughs> I don't moving. think. I don't think bubble wrap is enough, Kyle. He's moving some things. Put a mattress in between you and him. 13-11. <laughs> Jab step. Oh. He can taste the level. All up in his face. 
Lanceville will respond with a scoop de do and it's 14-13. Cedarifa working the two-man game. N nice defense here from, Aus from Australia. Blanchfield, no hesitation. Oh, stop Run it! Up and get done up. Two to the cranium from Australia's George Clooney. <laughs> it's Oshin's oh, 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 in is right now. <laughs> Oh, she and Spore, I'm telling I, you. Oh, man. He is a competitor. And you notice when he pulled that shot up, there was no hesitation. Oh. He wanted to get his toes behind that two-point line as quickly as he could. That ball was going up. I think the ball left his hands before he even made his mind up. That's how fast it was. But the competitiveness you mentioned is so key. He is on a mission. He's not going to allow his team to doubt or to mess that up. He wants that gold, and he's showing it. Sipiniano gives it up. He's got it back. Sipiniano. Oh, yeah. Slice it through traffic. What a... I don't know if they made that. A great play. Blanchfield. You know what Blanchfield should have done right here? He, he identifies the closeout. He has so much room. Just a uh, little nod, little head fake. Defender would have uh, ran by. He would have had a whole lot of time to uh, to be able to focus and knock that shot down. The previous one was necessary for him to trigger faster, but on this one, the recognition would have been to just ball fake. Blanchfield's going to get a rest. That's the most entertaining game of the day, maybe of the tournament. 16-13, still plenty of fun to be had in this one. Australia, again, trying to go undefeated into the quarterfinals. Hickey faked him out of his draw. That, that jab step and the fake spin, how you gonna keep up with that? Set a roof up. Baseline, took a bump. Foul's gonna get called on, on O'Donnell. That is the fourth on Australia as O'Donnell will check out. Blanchfield is back in. Cedarifa sets his sights, misses. Athleticism of Australia is on display. Cipriano makes sure that Hickey knows what that Ilio floor feels like. He gets a whistle as a reward. That is the sixth foul in the Philippines. So that means they have no more to give. So game. This is the layup. Dave. Oh, oh, oh. Davey with a love scratch on his right arm right now. You can tell this game has been physical. That's a warrior at battle. And the battle continues. 17-13, Australia. Arifa runs into trouble. One-legged fader off the iron. Blanchfield. Blanchfield up top to Davey. Back to Blanchfield. Blanchfield leans into it and gave him a heat stroke. He's got the stroke of genius right now. Todd Blanchfield is a blaze for the Aussies. Are there are fire officials near here. They better be ready. I think I hear the sirens in the distance. I'll tell you what, Australians, unfortunately, they are used to have those wildfires, so they are, they're ready for this. And Blanchfield, he's just punishing right now. He is just drenched at the moment, 19-13. As Australia has plenty of cushion, two points away from victory. 
Eximiano lost the handle on it, has to force it up late in the shot clock. That's a violation. As the ball did not connect with the rim. It's like switching balls, apparently. Blanchfield. He oh. is unconscious. Stop it. That was deeper than the abyss to put the game on ice. Todd Blanchfield is on fire like a liar's pants. What a shooting display from Todd Blanchfield to lead Australia to an undefeated record, 21-13. They are handling their business like a full body massage. What, what a game. Australia is, is playing at an at extremely high level right now. So I'll get it over to the Czar, who's with Todd Blanchfield. Don't touch his, don't touch his right hand, Czar. Take it away. <laughs> All right, my man, first things first, let me see that wrist. Oh, man, I understand now what's going on. There's wildfire out here. Congratulations for a tremendous shooting display. What do you believe was the key for you guys to recover from a hot start from, from the Philippines? I mean, we like to hang our hat defensively. You know, I think we, every game, this is a totally new group. So it was a, a bonus. We got to play the, the play-in games and get, get, get used to each other on the three-on-three -three court. So every, every game, we try to take a little step forward, and I think we did that, especially on the defensive end. Yeah, how do you guys feel? Because you had, uh, the, I guess, the unfor unfortunate qualifying draw to play before the main draw, and that can take a toll on your body. How do you guys feel overall? I mean, I like to say I'm young, I'm 32. <laughs> but, um, you know, the rest of the guys, I think the oldest guy is like 24, 25 maybe. So we've got fresh bodies, we're young, we're hungry. Obviously, I was here last year with a lot of disappointment. Still got a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, to be honest. So every game we're coming out, we've got to come out with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, and we've got to go after this thing. Well, you look like a man on a mission, man, so congratulations and good luck for the rest. Thank you, man. He's a man on a mission like Tom Cruise. Maybe that final destination is a gold medal this year for the Aussies. Maybe. We'll find out. Plenty of 3x3 hoops still to come. We'll let you enjoy the moving pictures of a dominant Australian win. The men still have the stage to themselves. Coming up next, it is China and Singapore. We're about five minutes away from that one. Stick around as we head down the second half stretch of the final day of pool play.
China retaking the court here after suffering a 13-15 loss to Iran earlier. Their uh, Asia Cup lives depend on their performance in this 10-minute sprint as they will lace them up against homestanding Singapore. I would say that they would be considered the favorites in this matchup, but again, Singapore showed us some, some great signs even in an earlier loss for them against Iran to where this game I think it could, it could really go either way. Maybe there is no favorite, but I'm not the expert. That's the czar. <laughs> what you think? Well, they are the favorite on paper. They are the, the historical favorite. They have more experience. They have more prestige internationally so far. Singapore is brand new as a program. But at home, you never know what can happen. And we've also seen some interesting things. It's just that they could not um, rip replicate enough times the good things they had in their minds to take away a, a victory but another game means what Kyle another chance so another we'll see opportunity right there's Singapore Delvin Go Ko Chiang Ding Lung Te Kelvin Lim Hong Da and Zhu Duang Yang your 16 seed and home standing Singaporean team participating in the Asia Cup for the third straight year as their program continues to grow, will they take that next step? Last year we saw them finish top eight. They won't be able to finish better than that if they don't win this game right here, right now. Obviously, Iran, the class of the group, they're going to the quarterfinals unbeaten. This will decide pool A. One thing that I'm really looking forward is, can Singapore respond to the toughness and intensity that China is going to bring? We saw that first matchup with China. They gave their best. It was a close game. And went down the wire. The main thing for Singapore, they have to withstand the first minutes of the game. China will try to make it a blowout if they're capable of running away with the score early. Singapore has something else in mind, though. But physically, they seem to be pretty evenly matched from, from the bigs to the wings. Similar in size, uh, some of the attributes. Both teams are quick off the ball, quick defensively. They got some length to go with it as well, so this is even Steven. Jan Payne. Bringing the pain. What, keep an eye out on Kelvin for Singapore. He's shown a lot of promise. He's built for 3x3. His body, you know who he, 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 who he reminds me of? Who? With his demeanor, his legs, and the way he walks. How? Who? The Phoenix. Finsgar. Oh, the, do, the do you Sphinx? See it? Yes. The Sphinx, right? I do see that. Shout out to the Sphinx. Kelvin didn't forget the tip. He brought his wallet. Hey. Well, they just made him pay double. Hey, settle down back there. <laughs> Four and one. But a night, another great start, man. What an exciting day. And, and look at the crowd. This venue is packed. It is lit from the first row to the top row. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're not only right, but behind us, people can't see it. But in the mall, 
People stacked up on the balconies. OCBC Square is turned up with their home squad playing well here. They do trail it by three, but fighting for their lives. But China off to the start that I expected them to have. And Yambo Zhu asserting himself on the inside. He'll check out right now to go with a slightly smaller lineup. As Ping Ching Lu will check in, and he will defend Ding at the top of the key. Jason <laughs> Tatsuo getting them in line. Eddie Lu on the baseline. Juan has it thrown back in his face. It's going to be a 12 second shot clock violation. If you're China, you clearly want to tune up before the knockout round. And there's no better way to get a win against Singapore to do that. Great execution. Whoa, getting up to get down. 7 2 China. A commanding lead early. Putting Singapore to the test here. How will they respond? Well, Delvin does just that. Scores on the drive there. Delvin is very smart with the way he uses the, the hand on fake. He, he looks like snakes, man. I'm telling you, the way he moves, the way he attacks that baseline, it's funny. Simon Finsgar. Slovenian future 3x3 Hall of Famer. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the Sphinx. Surely do. So we got to give them some 3x3 history from time on time to time. Too. Hey, we got to give shout outs. The culture of the game is all about the legacy that you know and, and that you leave behind. And since you brought up that comparison, every move that he makes, it, it looks just like. I, I'm telling you, that's why, that's why I thought of it. That is so weird. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's like the Asian version of the Sphinx. That it's, is funny. And it just like it just jumped to my eyes about a minute or so ago. Kind of like he moves like someone I know. He looks like someone I know. And you would know. And I would know. Seven four. Two minutes in. Yango Sui blew the clear. One. Magic. One. Good job. Very good job. So Singapore is starting to find an advantage on the inside. And not a bad decision to, to get it to Melvin when he's doing the damage that he's doing. There's a dynamic duel right Melvin. now. There's a dynamic duel right now for Singapore. They're using the big man that, that is doing a really good job screening and diving. And of course, Kelvin uses his uh, aggressiveness and long segments to uh, rain on the baseline like a madman. Singapore is in the hunt. The only thing they don't have going for themselves is the number of fouls they've committed already, but it's nothing alarming yet. They're in the hunt. Who's gonna be their bloodhound? One with two to shoot. One, he does get it up in time. Doesn't make it count. Wu stepping to the defense through the contact. His shot is off the mark. There's a foul, though, on the rebound attempt. That is on Singapore, which is number five. Yep. They've done a good job fighting to stay in this. Fight continues. China takes over. Lou, up fake. Bad pass. Too much heat on the pass. Jan couldn't pull it down. And he's tall and athletic, so <laughs> that lets you know how high the ball was thrown. Ding. Oh, I told you I was going to shoot it. Oh. I just can't delay the game, man. I don't want to get it technical. They don't know you can hit that from here consistently. They're right. You're right. They don't. Luke driving, dipping, missing. They'll get it to the baseline. That ball is stolen. Quickly cleared. The Olympian. Ping Yan loses the handle on it. Down low they go. A heavy helping of Delvin. 
7-6. Delvin snags the board. You can feel the energy from this crowd now. And I know if we can feel it, the players can too. Shake and bake Ricky Bobby. He made the move on him. <laughs> did he give him the double shift? He did. You know who did that? You know who did that? The Sphinx. I, I'm, something happened. I don't know if there was some transfusion of blood or something like that, but there is some connection. Because those guys, they are too similar. It's scary. But going to something more serious, though. Singapore is pressing on where it hurts. They give the ball to the big men down low, and they're just hurting. Oh, okay, this guy on the flex cam, you can't see it, but he doesn't even need the fake biceps because he got it. <laughs> oh, man. See, I, I can't get on the flex cam. Everybody's just judging your biceps. <laughs> Let a guy get on there with bigger biceps and embarrass you. Big time, Kelvin. He's even the game up, Angelo. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. Lou. Oh. No love. That would have been a, a great two to kind of stop the bleeding, silence the crowd. Man, this dude, this dude got game. He got game like Jesus Shuttlesworth. Eight seven. This is a very entertaining game for two teams that are fighting to get into the knockout round. Play in game right here. Being played exactly how you would expect. This is a championship caliber game because they're. Playoff lives depend on it. Oh, -ho! Dean! Dean! Answering the bell and having an opportunity to hit that free throw to give Singapore its biggest lead, Kyle. Yeah, by one point. That, but a lead is a lead. Their first lead. No, they're not the first lead. You're right. Biggest lead and will be two, but it's not. No. A good hustle by Dean, but wait a minute. Now it's three versus two. Oh, and that two is can. Peng Yan will give China a 10 9 advantage. 5 30 to play. What a game. Delvin, the man has been unstoppable to this point. Delvin getting faded. But it's a Russell Westbrook. Juan late the shot clock, doesn't touch any rim. So it's a shot clock violation. Substitutions being made for each team. Kelvin is back in, as is Wu for China. Dean now substitutes for Delvin. They're going to give the big man some rest. They're going to need him down the stretch as Wu attacks Wu. And the call for the foul and the rebound attempt. That's four on China. Singapore We're looking for this man number 22 Kelvin great flash right through the middle oh this is a great game gotta love it mismatch city though oh yeah Yambo Zoo Dwan drives and kicks Dean trapped in the corner. Dean comes free, puts the hook up. Loose ball goes to China. Dean wants to get it down to Zhu. Zhu is an animal. Smart play. A fatigue foul right there. Zhu wanted a substitution. And he sacrifices a foul to do so. Each team with five fouls. China with a two-point advantage. Kelvin. Oh, oh, no. Oh, he, oh, no. He misses, oh, he misses all the shorties. What an opportunity blown. Trailing by two, and now it's going to get worse. That's how quickly things can change in 3x3. You go from missing a layup that pulls you within one to committing a foul on a made bucket, and all of a sudden that lead could be at four in a blink.
got to capitalize on the easy opportunities. Kyle, they have a dynamic duo of Singapore on which they can build. They're showing promise. What I'm seeing right now is a promise for the future. Can they make it something efficient in the present? We got four minutes to display that, but. Delvin and Kelvin, that's a, that's a combo that you're gonna have to remember for the years to come if they manage to keep them together and build around them. 13-10, I, I do believe they have a good foundation. Really good foundation. The more they play, the more dangerous they will be. We'll see how much they have left to pull out a, potentially pull out a win here. Again, China is in front. They've led for most of the game, not by much. So we're watching some of those quick highlights. And the main thing that Singapore needs to try to get back to is utilizing the big man, but not trying to go for the first option. The first option, China can, with, can withstand pretty easily. But keep working around. He's going to find a way, find the angle, either for an open look for the guards or for himself being alone down low. Travel too quick for his own good. Apparently move the feet first. So Duan turns it over. Yan Bo Zhu will get things started for the Chinese. And get it down to Zhu. Oh, what you gonna do with Zhu? Duan, pull up. Right off the window. Singapore keeping stride. Yambu, Yambo Zhu is still attacking, though. He had been relatively quiet, but they've been featuring the big man. He's been delivering. Can they get a stop and not foul? Uh oh. Oh, dime time. You talk about threading the needle. Brought his sewing kit for show. 15 11. Delvin. And Duan, back to Delvin. Delvin, oh! <laughs> he met him at the... Look at that again, I need the replay. What a block. He met him at the front door like he ordered him. Oh. Straight up, clean defense. That's a volleyball block. Two hands. Zhu, no. John Payne, skies in for the rebound. Lost the handle. He'll give it up. Zhu to Lou. Lou for two. Missed it. Now Lou driving. What a finish. Skip to my Lou, giving China a five point lead, but not for long. Oh, lay some. A lot of talent on this floor right now. They cannot contain Zhu in any way. Delvin, right back. They need to stop if they want to exist. China in control. Just, yes. just above two minutes to play. Delvin, beat on the baseline. It's paying, extend China's lead to five. How about that pass, Kyle, from Zhu? Beautiful look. And the connection, all three players active on the play, building it as a team. Kelvin called for the foul. That's the seventh on Singapore. Eighth. But you know, it looks like China's gonna hold on to win this one. But Singapore have no reason to hold it, hang their head. This, right. this team has been impressive. They played well. A newly constructed team. You are, uh, the future looks bright. I think this is a performance they could be proud of. Whether or not they win or not, obviously it's not so likely. They're trailing by five. We got under two minutes to play. And Zoo's on the free throw line. But I just want to I wanted to make that point because 
Uh, I think there's a high ceiling for this team. They, they've got the talent. It's just understanding the nuances of the game and making the right plays. Executing when, when the, the, the critical points. I completely agree, Kyle. And I told you that dynamic duo of theirs is something that they can build around with promise. They're showing a good understanding of this game and a good talent. It's all about experience after a while. Delvin will take advantage. That's Bobby Good Chicken. For him, easy eating to make it 14 18. We've seen some crazier turnarounds than this could be, but China is just too good right now. China's operating on them. They, they haven't deviated from their strategy either. And that's why they're, they're able to answer. When they see a mismatch down low, they go down, and the bigs have been making the shots. Zhu sticks with it. That's another foul on red. No choice but to. So two more free throws upcoming for China that could end this game. It's up to Zhu. China lead it 19 to 15. First of two for Zhu. It's true. I know it's a little cat in the hat, but we won. I won the game. Ming Yan. China. Get the director's chair. It is a wrap. Great game uh, to watch. Great game to call. And even in the loss, one that Singapore should not hang their head about. They will not be advancing to the fifth and final day of play here at the Asia Cup, but uh, they gave their fans a performance to be proud of. Congratulations to China, meantime, because they do earn a spot to the quarterfinals. We will see them live and direct tomorrow as they emerge from a gritty game and end up beating Singapore in front of the home crowd. So we'll step aside for another brief moment and get ready to turn things over to the ladies in what could be the game of the day. New Zealand and Australia are waiting in the wings. The two rivals get ready to lace them up here at OCBC Square. Do not go anywhere. I'm telling you, this next one's going to be a good one.
as we get things back into the women's competition, Pool D play. The Asia Cup rivals, Australia and New Zealand, who have given us so many classics over the years. They will meet here in the pool phase with hopes of uh, obviously locking down a spot in the quarterfinals. India also in this group. Australia already, or, or New Zealand already beat India uh, to start the day. So New Zealand can secure the number one overall seed with a win here. They're going against the defending champion, Aussies. I don't know if you ever got a chance to call a New Zealand-Australia game. <laughs> Never had the chance. I had the opportunity to commentate some Panathinaikos, Olympiakos games in Greece, but never in 3x3 such a rivalry and the thing is look even at their flags so similar look at their level top of the of the food chain in asia they're very very strong they're very similarly built and it's going to be a battle like you you love to be able to watch it and clearly love to be able to commentate it that is without a doubt i'm having fun angelo's having fun are you having fun? That's I the question. Think, I think they are. Chime in, hit us up. Hit us up at FIBA3X3. Use the hashtag 3X3Asia. Follow me at 3X3TheVoice. At 3X3TheVoice. If you own to. Meantime, keep your eyes on these ladies at the moment. That is Team New Zealand. Ezra McGoldrick. Ella Foto. Lauren Hippolyte. Shard Papuke Robati. And now to get you introduced to the gang of rules. Here are the gang members. Miss Wilson, A Dub, Alex Wilson, Anna Lee Maley, the former WNBA. -er. Lauren Mansfield, the gritty guard and returning member of the gold medal squad from 2023. And the MVP, one of the most dangerous players in the women's game, that is Marina Whittle. Kangaroos in the building. Here in Singapore once again, defending their crown. Three gold medals for the Gangaroos. Team Australia has been the bar, men's and women's competition, and here they are yet again. Not to mention a bronze medal at the World Cup last year, which was the first ever. They've been trending up, and here they are. So, I know what to expect from this Aussie, Aussie team. Now, let me tell you, Angelo, they're tough. <laughs> Marina Whittle averaged 10 points a game yeah. last yeah. year in route to MVP. Right. This team is, is everything that you could want. New Zealand, we're going to see if they're up, up to the test. You know, Kyle, I had the opportunity to commentate and, uh, and see from up close that Australia team during the uh, World Cup qualifier last year before they actually uh, went to win that bronze medal. And they are truly impressive. I just want to see whether New Zealand is going to try to shuffle the cards because right now we're talking about group supremacy. Whoever wins this game will finish top of the group and that's going to be a, potentially a factor into facilitating its path towards a better draw. A number one seed usually, not always, usually gets a better, a better matchup in the knockout round. So we'll see. And it's a rematch of last year's gold medal game, at least for several of these players. So they are familiar with each other. Playing with plenty of pride, and Whittle was already getting to work. She showed up early. Down low to Sean. Sean trying to elevate and score over Anna Lee. She's able to draw the whistle. The one gold medal that the New Zealand women uh, have earned at the Asia Cup, 
They had to go to go through Australia to, to get there. And I remind you, in that semifinal game, the game-winning shot for Michaela Cox in the corner. That was that season's heroics. But since the Aussies have controlled the the head-to-head, -head, the pull-up is too strong. And Lee Maley. She'll hand it off to Whittle. Whittle turns the corner. Whittle is hacked. You don't see many smiles on the Gangaroos faces. They are all business right now. Well, you understand uh, what's at stake. You also want to have psychological advantage. Anytime you can beat up on uh, one of your main rivals, you kind of get that edge a little bit. 1-1. One, one. The defending champions making their debut here in 2024. Oh, behind the back. No, take that back. So center packing. Get back. You don't know me like that. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. Slick move for Mansfield, but Goldberg was not having it. Oh, yes. New time as Wilson saying had that. Well, she mishandled it to start with, but the member spirit with the Grinch edition, Kobe Sixes, helped to get that bucket on the elbow. I think those are her favorite kicks. I think she rocked some Grinches last year. Rightfully I got, so. Those are the those are the, the ones I have. What's your shoe size? Because we might have to talk business. <laughs> <laughs> like Alex Wilson just barely missed it. Drops Beautiful. it off to Anna Lee. She's happy to have it. She delivers the package. Oh, Anna Lee Maley whistle for the foul there. Point lead for the Aussies. But Goldwyn. It's going to be three seconds for sure. seconds. Took, yeah, took far too much time. Yeah, and the problem is she's passing it up to a teammate that was already in the paint as well. So either way, they were doomed on that uh, offensive possession. being defended by Marina Whittle. Whittle sticking right to her. That is sound defense. When you talk with Todd Blanchfield after that Australian men's win, he told you that it starts with the defense. And I think that's something that, that both coaches preach to their teams. That's Coach David Lowry uh, for the women's team, and Dave Bewer of the men's team. They really like to lock in defensively and allow that to kind of open up their offense. They usually say that defense wins championship. So it's been proven. And it's rare to have a chance. It's going to be a travel call. Don't get too excited. Because there was a lot of uh, Cupid shuffling down low. <laughs> Good defense. Four two gives it up, but Goldrick got her pocket kick. Tough defense. Man. Oh, nearly got it back, but she gets called for the foul. Teams have had a history of going at it. So many decorated players, Asia Cup gold medalists and silver medalists. So good. Taking it right out of Hippolyte. Mansfield's tough too. Probably should show her more love because she's such a critical part, critical to their success. Oh. Crafty move, comes up empty there. 
Mansfield being up on Hippolyte. Yeah, a little bit too aggressive defensively. Gets called for that foul. That wasn't the process of the shot, so Hippolyte will shoot one. Holding on to uh, Hippolyte's forearm. There was no way that Edmund Ho was not going to call that foul. New Zealand get their second point. And that's a mental and mistake right here. Seven minute mark. Last year, en route to their third goal, Australia did not allow any team to score more than 11 points. True stat. Final included. Here's Whittle. Whittle while you work. Oh man, I'm sorry. I just sometimes I just do these random things. I can't control it. Can't control it, man. It's the way it is. But don't change for anything. <laughs> Hashtag three eight three Asia. We're live from Singapore, and this game right now. I think both teams are playing so physical. They have to work so hard to earn every bucket they can get. So Australia also will have a chance to keep their Olympic dream alive as they uh, have a spot in UOQT number two that's going to be held in Utsunomiya, Japan, May 3rd. And they got a spot in the OQT by virtue of winning that gold medal at uh, last year's edition of the Asia Cup. So big plans for both countries going forward, but Australia certainly is going to have an opportunity to take a shot at the Olympic Games. Well, they're one of the teams that you could consider to be a dark horse in uh, in uh, that competition. They're definitely Olympic worthy. They're not the only ones. Mansfield being defended well. <laughs> it don't matter. Kobe. It don't matter. Hand up, so what? Hippolyte trying to get it down to Sean. Here's Robachi making her move. Wait a minute. Took too long. Three seconds, so Australia's defense has been smothering. They've got they've got New Zealand a little bit out of sync. The tall Ferns with just two points, three and a half minutes in. Now Australia aren't exactly lighting it up. They got six, make that seven as Annalee Maley shows off the feathery soft touch. But I think what we've seen is. One team dictating the pace more than the other. Yeah. And one team being more efficient, just like that. Speaking of efficient, watch your step. It's wet out there. Whittle cashes in from D. And now Alex Wilson. Uh-oh. The Gangaroos. They're turning up now. Gang, gang. Anybody watching. 10-2 gang. All the other teams watching and scouting right now. They're worried. They understand. The Aussies are on a mission. Alex Wilson makes the makes the lead nine now. Battling with McGoldrick, making things tough on her. Hippolyte runs into trouble. She's going to try to get out of there. Hippolyte. Shot clock violation. You can't even look at the rim, Kyle. The intensity. They got him in custody at the moment. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you in the court of law. I don't know the rest of it. I just figured <laughs> out. I, 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 to me, oh, you have the right for a lawyer. The, you have the right to a lawyer. OK, and, what, and then what? <laughs> if you don't have a lawyer, one will be uh, appointed to you by the court. Oh, oh, oh isn't you. that right? <laughs> I don't know if that's I think right. that's what it is. Okay, we're getting excited. We don't even know if it's right. <laughs> I'm 99% sure I'm right. All right, okay. <laughs> I've watched enough. All right, you Lord, think you're Lord so good? I got one for you. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And that's a nah, 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 all right. <laughs> I knew I could get you. Nobody knows the words to that. <laughs> 11 to 2. We can have this kind of fun in a game that's not exactly close. 
Well, not exactly indeed. And it doesn't look like New Zealand has any momentum to change that. Oh, for two, lost her footing for a sec. Hippolyte will step through, drops it off to Robotti. Robotti can't squeeze it. And New Zealand having all sorts of issues. Halfway through. And it starts with the Aussie defense. Mansfield. <laughs> this game got shooters. Look at the defense. Active hands, pushing, bumping, contesting. There's McGoldrick getting one to go. Ooh, behind the back. And Stop a lead, Maley. Maley will miss it, but draws the foul. Sixteen fouls against New Zealand, only four against Australia. A ten-point lead. This game is as ugly as an ogre. You're being mean to the ogre, man. Well, I, I said that this had a chance to be in the game of the day, and now... Uh, that, Sometimes, that, hey, you, you control only what you can control, sir. Yeah. So don't get worked up about that. Well, I think that's the first time this entire uh, tournament where I've been wrong. <laughs> I do remember several other predictions that were just spot on. So, all right, so. Uh, bug down, I need a, I, I need a clip, man. I, I need you to edit all those clips. <laughs> appreciate so, you, my man, appreciate you. A break in the action. The Gang Rouge trying to expand their territory to Singapore. Looks like they're doing a, a very good job at it. And uh, the New Zealand staff is going to have to go back to work. But I tell you what, if, if you have to take a beat down at any point in the competition, better be before the knockout. Manfield, tough drive. We'll draw the foul. And we'll shoot a couple of free throws. That's number seven on New Zealand who have only been able to manage three points in this game. Mansfield gets the friendly bounce. And the second one is good money. It is 15 to three. Hey, there we go. 15 to 5 is Hippolyte. With some Hydrolyte. Hippolyte needs to ignite. In a hurry, Mansfield, look, Ma, one hand. Off balance, what a touch. That was beautiful. 16 to 5. Double cross, see you later. Whittle. We'll miss it close. Oh. Little took a hard fall there. That's why he got the knee pads. Yep, she's tough though. Pops right back up. It's an 11 point game. Ella making a move past Anna Lee. Foul whistle. So far, Australia keeping their streak alive of holding opponents under 11 points. If it continues at this pace, New Zealand may not get there. So we're well past the midway point and they're, they're, they mustered five points. Isn't that the first two-point two shot attempt from Futu? 
She's been on, uh, on lockdown, not even being able to shoot it. Even have an attempt at the rim before this one. Good, Good defense there from Robati. Sent the order back, now it's 4-2. 4-2 setting it up off the crossover. Ella lets it fly. That's a good shot, you gotta take it, but you need some lift, some elevation. This defensive performance from Australia has been impressive, and the offense has, has followed. Whittle misses the attempt, but it's thrown away. And the lead over to Alex Wilson. Oh yeah, plenty of contact there. Two free throws were coming one way or the other. Alex Wilson, a new addition to the team last year. That's when she made her debut. Love, love her game. She's a stone cold shooter. Every player on this team is gritty. She's got the toughness that made her a good fit for this squad. The reason why she's back this year. A two way player. She can guard multiple positions. And her last name's Wilson. Shout out to our ball sponsor. If you can't ball with the last name Wilson and you play with a Wilson, I think there's something wrong. Plus, you, wear, you play in style with the Grinch edition Kobe Sixes. It's oh, like, yeah. I mean, come on, man. That's just extra points. Extra credit. Hippolyte. OK, Hippolyte. Trying to be impolite right now, but it's too late being down 10. Field. Continues to be a problem. Whittle tracks it down. Whittle taking it at Hippo Light. Whittle cannot get it to go. Gets it back. Miss it again, but we'll shoot a couple of free throws. She started off hot, and then the last couple of minutes, she's been missing a lot of those close to the cup buckets. She has a chance to. Uh, make up for it at the free throw line. Marita Whittle, MVP, gold medalist, 2023. Misses her first of two, also a silver medalist in 2022, and of course on that bronze medal team of the, gold, of the World Cup in 2023. Gets a hand on it. She and Whittle share everything. And especially the Wilson. Don't convert that to any points. 19 to 7. Mansfield. No stroke that time. Foul on the floor before the shot. So just a minute 30 remaining. And a one-sided affair. Robati catches in, making it look a little bit more respectable. But this game has not been in question for quite some time. Adding another touch and bringing the Aussies within one of winning it. Hippolyte fires it up. And Lee. Scored! Couldn't finish it. Getting to the last minute of this, of this game. And Lee. Two. Oh, they are too good. Gang, gang, the Gangaroos with a commanding win to start off their campaign in 2024, defending gold with a double-digit win, 22 to nine over their longtime rivals from New Zealand. Did not look like much of a rivalry at all. A well-balanced, a well-rounded effort. 
from Team Australia. And it started on the defensive end, as I'm sure the czar will speak about with Annalee Maley. He's standing by courtside now. Take it away. Annalee, what a performance. New Zealand, Australia, there's a history of tough battles. Was it important for you guys, or is there a little bit of extra spice every time you play against them? Uh, look, New Zealand are a really great team, and they play with a lot of heart the same way we do. So we're kind of going out facing uh, a team that plays similarly to the way we do, with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. And it makes for a good game for the crowd and for the people watching. I wouldn't say there's a rivalry. It's just fun. It's just basketball, but enjoyable. Well, when you start off a tournament with such a dominating performance, what is the trap that you need to avoid by all means? Uh, never get complacent, right? Like nothing's expected. Like none of these, every single one of these teams can beat any other team on any given day. Like three, that's why 3x3 is so exciting. So like I guess the trap that we're not going to fall into is like, you know, everyone's here and everyone's talented. We just have to play our best brand of basketball, play the Gangaroo style, play the way we want to play. And um, the rest is out of our control. We just have to play hard and with heart and, you know, hopefully the wins will follow. All right, thank you very much. Good luck for the rest. Well, it, it is kind of hard to say that they have any rivals at the Asia Cup. Uh, Australia have won more goals than anybody else. But they do tend to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with New Zealand. They didn't do it in this game. This was a knockout. Australia dealing the big blows, the jabs, the hooks, the straights, the uppercuts. They beat them up on the inside and did the same on the outside. A runaway victory for Team Australia. So a few last looks at uh, some of the highlights. We still have three games remaining on today's slate. Coming up next, we have Japan and Thailand in the women's competition. Then Japan and the Philippines in the men's competition, Pool C followed by Australia and India to cap the day. So stick around. We'll be right back with the next game coming up from here at OCBC Square. Japan <laughs> with their smile that we love so much. Always good vibes, always good energy. The Japanese ladies are going to be matched up with Thailand for supremacy in the group. Thank you very much, sir. Kyle Montgomery bringing me an ice cold water. I love it. They're going to be matched up with Thailand. Both teams qualified already into tomorrow's bracket, the knockout round. Now, which seeding is going to be theirs at the end of this game? That's going to be up to them. Thailand, obviously, and we like it. We like the vibe. Yeah. We see you, girls. They're going to have to try to match up in the paint with no other than Miwa Kuribayashi. It's gonna be a tough matchup. Kuribayashi was impressive in, the, in her first game, doing it from the inside and the outside. Obviously, she's towering over everybody. 
with our 188 centimeters. For those that don't know, it's like six, two and three quarters. So it's like barely two centimeters shorter than me. And um, you're not 188. Oh, I'm, I'm 189 three quarters and 190 on paper. Yeah, I'd say about 179. <laughs> 79, huh? Yeah. I got a, I got a knife for this now. You, I think you might even be a little bit taller than me. Oh, I don't know, man. What's your official size? Height? I thought I was 190 or 191. Nah, you, you're 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 a real 190. Okay. All yeah. Right. Cause I'm not above. That's for sure. I'm I'm six three. Yeah, that, okay. that was my official size as well. All right. Official height. Without shoes on. Most people don't believe it because when I take pictures and next to the, most of the players who are giants, yeah. it makes me look tiny. I also yeah. have a peanut head, so that makes me, <laughs> it makes it even worse. So people assume that I'm, I'm pretty short, and then they see me, and they say, oh, wow, you're taller than I thought. No, man, it's legit. It's legit. You're <laughs> legit 6'3". Legit, legit. All right, we got uh, so we got Japan and Thailand here. Women's pool B play. We uh, we we saw Japan way way earlier today. Yeah, it was that one point win over Iran. They pulled it out by by one point. Puts them in a good position here for for this contest. Thailand also victorious over Iran, so no question as to whether or not these teams are going to be making it into the quarterfinals. The only question is, who's going to have the number one seed? So we uh, we will ten minutes sprint our way to that conclusion. Wow. Yes. I got to show you this, man. I'm showing it live because I, I, I'm an emotional daddy right now. My wife just sent me a. A picture of my son who who was doing this uh, little baby basketball oh, thing today, and, and he just got his first medal. He just got his first medal. Oh, let's go. Oh, baby. Go. Oh, yeah. So proud, <laughs> Papa, right here. Proud, Papa. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank that's you, good. sir. Thank you, sir. All right, Daddy's, Daddy, better get back to work now. Yeah, he ready. He, he focused. He put, focused. Put your analyst hat on. We'll look at that later. That was that's that's cute. First medal, not even three years old. You got more medals than me already. <laughs> Meantime, it's Chiba to the crib. We'll miss it. Rajrab Suk, hand it over. Kyle. Into pump, yeah. Do you feel that Thailand could surprise everyone and shock Japan? Um. Yeah, I, I do. I do think this. This matchup is fairly even. I, I think Japan had the bigger advantage with Kurobayashi on the inside. I think a lot of times games are decided by an X factor, a player that's just that's hard to stop. They can wreck shop all by themselves. Right. I think Japan had that, but I've seen Thailand at this event for several years, and they always seem to field teams that find a way to win. Yeah, scrappy. They're, they're scrappy, scrappy and they know how to play. Oh! I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's the craziest assist of the tournament. No look behind the head. Wow. I didn't even see it. I know. That's why I had to interrupt you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man, Faruqi. Ferocious. <laughs> We're going to get to see that again, oh, apparently. And she's going for the back-to-back -back assist, but it got spoiled. Oh, man. And oh. Thailand. Udom Suk knocks down the two. Thailand up by two. Oh, Canada. Oh, oh, oh. oh, don't hate the player, hate the game. Sweet left hand. But I, I guess we're going to get a look at the Faruqi. Di oh, this is a sick dish. That got food poisoning on it. <laughs> Keep away oh, from that food. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was sick. 3-3. Three, three. Not sicker than the one eating it. Little <laughs> <laughs> soup. We'll miss that two attempt. But maybe she's the X Factor for Thailand in the same way that I talk about Kurobayashi for Japan. 
seems to have that, that ability. I saw Quadrup Souk at this event last year, as well as uh, Bunsen Pro. Push to get open. I believe that's more of the push that was a call for the foul. Traveling. Foul They're watching those feet very closely on the inbound. Haruki will open the possession for Japan. Back over to her. Haruki. Let's see what other dimes she's got. In yep, the that's first. a travel. And that's a shame. That's beautiful because she would have had one of the nice, nastiest highlight of the day, knocking down that two right after. Nice jab. Yeah, I was. Can I call it a nice jab step? Just a travel. Almost a nice jab step. Yes. Oh, kind of a wild shot attempt there. Now the mismatch. Wide open shot. Chiba tastes the rainbow. Sweet. Almost hit the ceiling. Such a trajectory. It's like a rock, like a comet. Uh, 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 oh, uh, man. Uh, uh, uh. What's going on with the jabs, man? They're like going at each other with the. All I heard was shifting. the crowd say, oh. And then, ooh. ooh. And then, boo. But she missed it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to stop with those travel calls. Girls, clean up that pivot foot. Can't be jumping and hoppy, bunny hopping like this. Five three. Chiba. On the rainbow. This is it. There's a foul over the back. Uh, Kurashiba was attempting the shot. Second on Thailand. Kurashiba shoots one. Shooting straight. Get him shoot. Get him shoot. Turns around. That's a tough shot. Good defense. Yeah, got to credit Japan for locking in. Chiba with the heads. He stop and go. Kirabayashi back over to Chiba. Chiba steps through. Forces one up. Late in the shot clock. No choice. Make a substitution. Chiba checks out. Rumsuk has that pass taken away. It's Furuki. Will let one go. Didn't have the right trajectory. It's Kirabayashi hustles it down. And leads to a layup. So credit Kirabayashi for hustling that down. Put forth that extra effort. And Kaneda able to scoop it and score. 6-3 Japan. Nice move. Great finish. The spin, the control. And Furuki almost got in trouble stopping her dribble. Furuki takes her move. Thailand in the hunt. Little soon to step back. Oh, hey. she had some space <laughs> in the relationship. <laughs> she was feeling smothered. So hit the two. Did I hear a whistle as well? Foul call on the box out. You'll see right there. Because uh. when she went to try to get the go to the rebound, because you'll see a lot in three x three players that follow their own shot. So sometimes, and most of the times, people get caught slipping. After contesting the shot, they kind of stop playing. And since you don't make all the shots that you take, many times in 3x3, you can get your own rebound. And as she tried to box out, she fouled. Wow. So that is unique. That, that two, of course, does count 
And Thailand recovers position. And Thailand had possession as well. So things could not have gone much better for Thailand as they've evened this game at six apiece. Not the best execution right here. Turnover. Chiba. She almost went too fast for her own good. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Just couldn't press the brakes at all. Oh, we don't see. Like her game a lot. Yeah. She's got to get some, some help. Two oh. ball corner pocket. She's a 3x3 shark. And the trajectory on those shots, Kyle, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Like in those old cartoons, Looney Tunes, you can hear the sound like for an hour. <laughs> Coyote falling from the yeah. <laughs> from the canyon. Oh, we got the same references. This is not fair. <laughs> Wiley Coyote. Yes, sir. Roadrunner. Yeah. Thailand not going anywhere. 8-8. Eight, eight. You're right. Chiba quicker than your first time. 9-8. Hoopsum <laughs> gets called for three in the key. I don't know why Angelo's up here laughing. He can't even give analysis because he, I don't. Security. Security. Please. Come get this man. <laughs> Come get this man, please. <laughs> Chiba. With the quickness again. Ooh, that was the right idea, but the poor execution. Bunsi Palm fade the fake the pass and missed the shot. Kaneda quickly over to Chiba down low. Kurabayashi. They haven't been able to find this option quite enough this game, but they're still in front by two. Kurabayashi held her ground, but has a tough time guarding those smaller, quicker players. Chiba, who stops up from the free throw line. Nothing happening. Close game still. Uh oh That one mishandled. That's going to cost him a few seconds in the shot clock. Long attempt. Out of bounds. We're past the midway point. 4.54 exactly left. And Japan lead it. 10 zip. Got a chance to go 2 0 out of this group. Thailand could take, take the lead with a win here. There is a sense right now that Japan pressed on that, that next level, next level focus on defense the past two minutes, and Thailand has, an, has had a hard time responding to that lockdown defense. They did until now. Willem Sook continues to get to the rack. Turning the corner, has he? Rookie to Kaneda. Kaneda. It was almost another bomb, but just a little bit long. Udonsuk. Up fake. Step back. Get over here. Oh, she did a scorpion on her. Get over here. Finish her. <laughs> Finish her. Fatality. <laughs> For sure. That's a great highlight, though. <laughs> And I like the way she celebrated, like just little fist, uh, fist clinch. Yes, good shot, but staying within this, this momentum. There you go. Look how much space she created. That was a whole galaxy. 11-10 for Uki. That one comes out of orbit. Right doesn't, now. Doesn't find his mark. Right now, it's Japan that is struggling to uh, contain. Rati Yakorn, Udumsuk, just going to work and willing her team into the lead. What a great performance. 
She's doing it in all kind of ways. We saw her post up, finishing. We saw her create space. And, oh, you saw, you saw that. You saw that replay right there. That was the pass. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw the pass. Yeah, you missed it earlier. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing. But you are here to call the games, right? Why would you not be looking at the actual? <laughs> you must have dropped your pen or something. I think that's what I did. I was picking up. No, no, you were organizing your files, which. Oh, yeah, I was getting my papers ready for right, the. Right, yeah. exactly. So. You know what happens sometimes. But that's the reason I'm here, just to have your back. Thank you, sir. Like G Money, I'm, I'm, I'm my brother's keeper. <laughs> <laughs> we got the throwback reference. We got more throwback references than we could count. Kuribayashi shooting one. The reason I didn't see that is because I was trying to use your... My you adapter? Go. Yeah. Man. Man. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Okay. I mean, I, I, led the, I led the adapter here on display just for you, sir. Thank you. When you need it back, let me know. Well, since I'm a I'm a guy that anticipates, I have to. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, by the way, both these teams going to the quarterfinals. This is for first place in the group. Oh, another step back. That one off the mark. Oh, too Paul. Can't get it to go either. Chiba cross right to left. Step back, two-handed release, still no good. And uh, as a reminder, pool C and pool A will cross. Great back door. Who else? Excellent. Who else? Excellent. Beautiful spin to get free recognition to make the pass to begin with. Right on the money, and Udom Suk puts it up and in. Well, you want the craziest stat for this game, Kyle? Sure, give it to me. She got 10 out of 12 points. Udomsuk? Yes. 10 out of 12. She's on a killing spree. I, I figured she, I thought she had maybe eight. I knew she was playing well. But the way 10 she, of 12? <laughs> the way she plays, it feels like she has 12 out of 12. That's true. So reminder, Pool C and Pool A will cross in the quarterfinals, which means the winner of this game will play against Chinese Taipei and the loser will be matched up with China. With China. Oh, the runner is no good. Off balance, sweet finish. Great box out. Furuki earning possession back for Japan. Well, I think I, I think you might have got that one. Isn't wrong. that isn't that pussy? No. It's it's B B and D that cross right, and right. A and C and A and C right. So the winner of this game very likely well oh no there is no no oh, Japan talent is B yes I thought they yes. were C my bad so, so it's gonna be Australia or New Zealand well this is very meaningful for whoever wins it if you see what I'm trying to say yes <laughs> but uh, it'll be Australia or New Zealand still one more game between Australia and India. But I, I think I'm willing to go ahead and say that India is not going to beat Australia. Uh, not with three players. So Australia is very likely going to go 2-0. New Zealand will get the second spot out of D and end up playing the number one from B. And the number one from B is, uh, well, we'll find out who that's going to be. It won't be Iran because they lost to both Japan and Thailand. Right. So we'll, we're going to find out right here. Not saying that playing against New Zealand is going to be a, a walk in the park. Far from it. But after what you've seen right now, which one would you want? <laughs> you want to avoid. You want to avoid Australia as By long as you can. As long as you can. As, as as long as you can. You don't want to invite that matchup. Especially in the quarterfinals. No.
Udom Sook can't add to her personal scoring spree. But the first free throw missed. Second opportunity. She will can it. Ties the game at 13. 11 out of 13 points, Kyle. Offensive foul. There's Udom Sook in her bag. Udom Sook drops that. Huh. This woman has been delivering more than a midwife. 14, 13. And she's got 12 of Thailand's 14. Wait a minute. Chiba. She's going to hit the projectors if she keeps shooting that high. We need the lights. <laughs> she dropped oh. it out of the sky. It might be the most impressive individual scoring outing that I've seen in the women's bracket. They need to call reinforcements. They need some milk. They need some help. Olivia Pope, somebody. They cannot stop Udomsu. That's the point. Chiba gives it up. Kurobayashi right back. Oh, that was a yep. tough, tough screen. Surely has. Oh, yeah. You don't want to give too much. Well, that was long, long dapa. Under a minute. And now, both teams could avoid Australia in the quarterfinals. That's really what this is about. It really is. A battle to avoid the Aussies. And finish with a perfect record. In, in the quarterfinals. Up fake. Udom Sook. And Japan cannot afford to foul any longer. Oh! Counted plus the foul. Japan take a one point lead with 37 seconds left. And timeout on the floor. Japan cannot afford to foul by any means necessary. Double bonus point pending over their heads. But Thailand still has both the time and the talent to either send this game to overtime potentially or even steal it away. Not even steal it, take it away from Japan because it's been a very even battle. No one would steal anything from anybody. It's all about taking what you think and believe is yours. Wow. The energy in this place has been great all day long. We are heading down the final stretch of the, of the last day of pool play. And just a couple more games left to solidify the quarterfinal bracket. We got 36 seconds left in this one. And still no idea on who's gonna come out victorious. The two teams that are quarterfinal bound. And one of these two teams is gonna be bound to play Australia. Chiba, whoa. Don't you got insurance? She crashes to the ground on the drive. A little bit wild. Gives up the possession to Thailand. Who could tie or take the lead? Udon Suk down to the post office. Who is this woman? The only post office I know that's open on, on Saturday until 9 p.m. Step back, two on the way. 
Tie game at Give 16. Her the ball. Three to shoot. Montapa, no, we're gonna go to overtime. And everybody's pleased in the stands because they want to make it last. I'll tell you this, it's been such an even matchup. Somehow, would you expect it to not go to overtime? They've been going back and forth, trading baskets. Only fitting. Only, Only fitting. fitting. But they're tired. Dead tired. So as we go to OT, I remind you that the first to score two points wins. After this, we're going to have a pretty explosive game in the men's bracket, Kyle. Well, we, I hope we do. Japan and the Philippines going at each other. Whoever loses is out, so you know it's going to be explosive. Bayashi going for the one. Japan assumed the lead. Great execution, not rushing to try to get a two. Or two can get a layup. Oh, up top. there goes that woman. Oh my, what a sook. She just barely missed it. Haruki to the corner, Kaneda. Game. 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 Japan get it done in overtime. They stay undefeated. They will get the top slot out of women's pool B and will likely face New Zealand in the quarterfinals. While Thailand is going to have to tangle with very likely Australia. 19 16, the final in OT of a thriller. Here's some highlights for you. Two more games left on the schedule while Japan and the Philippines men will close out Pool C. And then the Australian women will take on India's women to close out the day. Just a couple of minutes away from those two games. Stick and stay. A couple of, two, couple of 10 minute sprints still remaining, folks. You don't want to miss them. Stick around. Australia, the Philippines, and Japan. We already know Australia is undefeated. Finishing top seed in the group. 
They're going to be one of the main favorites of the competition, just like the Aussie ladies. But now, Japan and the Philippines are battling for the second ticket out of Pool C. Can Thomas Kennedy and company get the job done? The Philippines looked explosive in their first game against the Aussies. But Japan has some weapons. It's going to be a great game. I'm looking forward to it. Can Japan follow the pace and crazy rhythm that is going to be imposed by the Filipino Puso? We'll see. Philippines battled it out with Australia. They were in the lead, had a, up to four point lead, close to the halfway point of the game, but then Australia just pressed on that gas pedal and the Philippines could not withstand the physical game by O'Donnell. And most importantly, Blanchfield, who just put on a shooting display Japan lost to Australia, 2013. Philippines lost to Australia, 21-13. Seems like a pretty even battle. Two teams that are pretty close in their mold and built. Two teams which philosophies also are very alike. Attacking gaps. Moving the ball around and shooting that thing with purpose. So who you got? Who you rooting for? Philippines, Japan. I'm back. What's up? Well, I kind of missed you, man. Thank you. I made I made it back in time for the game. Was rushing good. I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to miss a minute of this one. Ah, uh, you know you don't want to. Japan and shouldn't anyone. So Japan and the Philippines, both of these teams, losers to Australia, which you probably already mentioned. Oh, uh, I, I gave the full breakdown. Okay, so I won't even go into all that. Yeah, the stage has been set. Yeah. Now all we need to do is play some ball, y'all. That's it. So the Philippines will start off with the ball, which means in case of overtime, Japan will have it. It's going to be a great matchup. Both teams only scored 13 points against Australia. Now, whoever... Ximeniano. Whoever manages to have more points than the opponent will join the quarterfinal party. Same situation as last game. Oh. Oh, no. See, they ain't gonna be friends no more. You can't mess up my dimes, homie. Kenny, Kennedy. Too strong. Kennedy's one of those players, too, by the way. When he gets it going, I've seen him hit four or five twos consecutive. Yeah. So maybe a little bit streaky. A bit, a bit. But the thing is, he is also doing all the, all the, those little details that help your team win. Setting the screens, battling in the post like he's doing right now. Drop step, get your weight up, kid. And he's one of the only guys on that Japan team that can guard every position. Well, he's got that versatile size. Right. I'd say what, 6'5", six, 6'6"? Six, six? Close to 6'6". Six, six. Yep. Actually, if I think of it, he's closer to 6', yeah. Maybe 6'7"? Close to 6'7". He's a little bit of, he's like 6'6 six, six and a half. Him and the worm start the possession. How about Yosuoka? Even in the loss for Japan earlier, he played, he played well. He's shown the ability to be able to shoot the rock. So who wants it more, the Philippines or Japan? Yasuoka. Great driving kick. Kick it out. Kennedy, he's shooting, shoot. He pulls out the blicky. Look at this defense. 
Chai made it so hard to dribble out. Kamoyo Chai, the veteran on that team, the one with the most caps for Team Japan. Defense is tight for Japan right now. Philippines finding it hard to get a bucket. Finally, come free for an easy score underneath. The first bucket of the game for the Philippines. So the refill is the one who did the honors. Now he's got to try to dent D. L. Kennedy. I told you, versatility, you mentioned it, Kyle. And uh, he's not going to force it. And the thing about it also, he's so patient. Doesn't get worked up if it doesn't get the ball. Oh, what a score. That's a grown man bucket right there. 5-2 Japan. As Ximignano will get things started again. Ximignano using that quickness. He blew a tire and did the belly flop. And technical call on Philippines, I think for behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to the refs. You know what I like? Ochai as a true vet and leader of this squad emotionally and spiritually. Right away, he saw technical foul call. Kennedy was on the side, told him, Come shoot that free throw, buddy, right away. No hesitation, identifying who your main guys are for the main things they're supposed to be good at. And sure enough, Kennedy, swish to swish, makes that free throw. You won't find many players with the type of experience that uh, that Tomoyo Chai has in 3x3. You're right. He's one of the, the most senior members, senior players in the game, and obviously an Olympian representing Japan at the highest level of any sport. Such a successful five-on-five -five career in Japan as well, so he's a player coach. And right away, identifying mismatch, telling Thomas Kennedy to go down low, where he's been so successful so far, drawing the foul. And once again, it's the little things. You're, gone, you're not gonna see Ochai under the uh, leader scoring. No. Maybe in assist, because he has that, that understanding. Oh, that certainly. Basketball IQ, but statistically, it's not going to be up high in the pyramid. But I tell you one thing, he's a stabilizer right away, knowing where to give the ball, who to give the ball to, and that's a difference maker early in this game. He'll have his fingerprints on a little bit of everything. And while someone else may have nine points, they probably won the game because of the worm. And, <laughs> and his decision making. His defense, he's so active. Simeone gets it up. Take that with you. Bump and the bucket. The Philippines get a little bit of a spark from Maximiliano. They need that spark. They need someone to say, look guys, we're out if we lose this game. Let's go. That is what's at stake. A ticket in the quarterfinals. Two and a half minutes in. Yasuoka down to the worm. Three and the key is called. The moment he had that ball, you got to shoot it. That was a great seal position. They came at you with the double team, but you can't play like you have the luxury of just passing it out again. On come the Filipinos. Simeon just a little off target. Thomas Kennedy kicks it over. Nice ball movement to get it down low to Saito. And he will miss it point blank range. And Simeone, so dangerous with that cookie in his hand. Working from the left wing, cross. Has it, baseline, turned it over. Oh, they give it right back though. And he would have turned it over anyway because he didn't feel zone. That's true. Simeone now takes it. 
thanks to the screen. He's going to get at least a look. Launches, misses. Rebound goes to the Philippines. Offensive rebound in such a critical stat in 3x3. I'll take that. You take this. Don't mind if I do. 6-5. Yasuoka gets out of there quickly. As Japan will answer right back. And Philippines throw it away. I think he saw me sitting behind the bench over there, so he's like, maybe oh, he, he saw a shooter. Right, right. He saw a shooter. <laughs> Got the wrong color jersey on. For sure. But a two-point contest. Every game to be played uh, has implications on the quarterfinals. Even though well, the Australia-India game is going to sure India could win the game. We don't think that that is likely. They cannot. Let's just right. let's just keep it there. Let's just keep it above. So we might as well just. Nice, the execution going around the world and getting fed on the platter by Ochai. 8-5 then. Ooh, cookies. Oh, cookies. That's Ooh, no. Ooh. Got a little bit nonchalant with it, don't you feel? Got a foul there at uh, on Japan. Number Thomas, three. Thomas Kennedy tried to put too much spin on it. Well, he telegraphed the pass like you. You can see it coming. That was an easy steal. And that's why Thomas Kennedy had that look on his face. Like, he knew that was a pass he probably should have made. Yeah. Sometimes you can get away with him, uh, but not most of the time. Eximiliano. You can get away with it if your, if your opponent has given up. Yeah, like, or, or, they're, or they're tired. Right. A look at the worm. Oh, no look. Fine to Yasuoka. Good hands, deflecting that pass and making up for it, deflecting on the other side. Looks like another tight contest. Unless somebody can blow it open. Japan's lead at three, but you hardly feel like it's safe with the way the Filipinos continue to attack. The mistakes and turnovers, though, are beginning to, to mount for the Philippines. See them throw away some uh, some possessions by miscommunicating, misdribbling, losing their footing. Three-point deficit is what they face right now as Kennedy gets them going. Japan, that is. The worm loses the handle on it. Ochai over to Thomas Kennedy. Thomas. Kennedy will miss it. Open screen. Oh, yeah. Offensive foul, number six on the Philippines. That is That puts him in a bad position. Next defensive foul. Japan is shooting free throws, and they already hold a three-point lead with 5.16 to go. Foul. That's the same kind of foul. The main problem for Ochai on this one is that you got to set your feet, and if the defender wants to force the way, you being set pretty much forces him to throw you down to the floor. But if you're just accompanying him, backstepping, you're the one on, in the way. Great hand. Kennedy with the thing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See what see what had happened. See what had, had happened was I, it had slipped when I had I didn't jump right and then I I even missed the second one too. I love it because he gave me that I, look. <laughs> he turned around and gave me that look. <laughs> he was just he was too anxious. He was overzealous and trying. He needs to sit down and think about that one for a while. He's on the bench. He's 36 years old. Let's not forget. <laughs> Well, he needs to remind himself that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I still got some bunnies. He needs some milk. Eight five, it's it stays. Bit this way for almost 
almost two minutes now. The offense has got to return for one of these teams at some point. Ochai to Yasuoka yes, with the stroke. 10-5, Japan. DJ Lass. Yeah, shout out my guy, DJ Lass. 3x3's Olympic DJ. Homeboy, I came to party. Hey. Travel call. 431 to go. Kennedy's back in. He's giving me the side eye. I know he wants to have the highlight of the game. I know it. Well, I feel it. Maybe he sticks to layups this time. Or shooting. He knows. He heard me. Oh. Shoots his shot. Recovers. There, you go. there we go. Layup that time. A higher percentage bucket. Six point contest. Nice score off the glass. Saldua. Great two man action right here. Okay. With the misfire. Rushing a bit, maybe. Yeah. Right? He didn't, sh he didn't shoot that comfortably. He's got it up as quick as he could. And that's going to be given back to. Ooh, I believe it's a double touch, but it's tough to see with the, with the angle. Well, the referee. I thought Kennedy touched that last. You think. Well, I think I think he touched it, but he touched the, the hand of the Filipino player right after. Well, here's some of the work that Kennedy has done. It's the score on the inside, but the Philippines have still found a way to continue to fight back and are within reach. You see Japan's lead slowly get a little bit bigger. See how they how the Philippines respond with Cedarifa. Get things going. He's got two to shoot. Gets it up quickly. No rim is touched, so a shot clock violation. Five-point lead for Japan. I think this is where this game either turns into a blowout. Or becomes a competitive game. A two from Ochai would really open the floodgates. 13 to 6. Great active hands. And you know why it's so important, Kyle, to have your hands active and hands high, even if you make a mistake defensively. You can make up for that mistake or that lack of communication. Here, if the ball goes through, it's a wide open layup, but deflecting it prevents that from happening. So the Rifa, tell me, baby, can you stand around? Who's that? Whose song is that? Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. New edition. I wasn't a big fan. Don't get mad at me for that. Wow. All right. Can you stand around? Y'all know this song? That song at home? I was more of a Casey and JoJo guy. Oh, that was yeah, Jodeci. Well, Jodeci was the group. Maybe I will cry for you. You know that one? Yeah. Tonight. Just a couple of old dudes talking about music while the 3x3 game is going on. In just a few months, I'll be a, we'll be able to say uh, uh, <laughs> just a bunch of 40-year-olds. <laughs> yep. Two more months for you. Yep. But this game is uh, not gotten out of hand. But They're, Japan oh. certainly have a commanding grip right. on this one. Right, right, right. There's an advantage. So I'm giving us an excuse for our singing randomly in the middle of a game. If it was 18-18, I don't think that we a song would, would come out. It's 14-8. Make that 15-8. Kennedy knock it down the first of two. Kennedy, leading scorer in this game. With his eighth point, or ninth point now. Wow. This game. Quiet is kept. That's a hell of a performance for Kennedy. And that's a hell of a shot from Eximiliano. He's on target like a red dot. 
Philippines try to key in on the defensive end. That's the only chance that they'll have with under three minutes to play is a travel on Kennedy. Sixteen ten. We've seen him get that bucket pretty consistently. Saldua, great on the drive. Uh oh, mouse in the house. Mouse in the house. He just got caught in the trap. Kennedy lets Timoniano shoot. He's Double. gonna shoot that one. That's what. Oh, patient. Okay. Okay. I'm not mad at that, Kennedy. Oh, because he wants to go grind it down. Oh. Get out of my way. 11 points now. Yeah, he's uh, he's on a kill streak. And I don't know if the Philippines going to be able to respawn. I don't think so. That's a Call of Duty reference there. Respawn. Killing streak. Have you ever played that game? <laughs> <laughs> you look this crowd, man. I was shooting in the gym. Can, well, can't okay. get mad at me. I can excuse you for that. There you go. You were shooting in the gym. I was sitting on the couch with a, a joystick <laughs> in my hand. All right. <laughs> but I tell you one thing. What's in that? 2K, you would destroy me. <laughs> uh, probably so. Oh no, definitely so. I'm more of a Madden guy, but that's all right. Well, any game on FIFA. The, yeah. the only one I kind of, I kind of played a little bit was FIFA. The other ones, no. I had one year of playing Call of Duty. Uh, it was uh, oh, oh, oh. Watch the foul. a narrow miss right there. And he has some contact on that shot. Call of Duty Ghost, that was the one. Oh yeah, I played all of them. Simeone off balance. Buck 30 to play. Japan pretty much got this one in the bag. Three in the key. And Ochai is, is arguing that call. Go ahead. You know how Japan won this game, right? They won the physical battle down low. They utilized Kennedy even with Ochai a few a few times, and they just kept bumping up the the fouls in their favor and scoring from close. That's how they built their win. Kennedy had three three quarters of his buckets in the paint. So foul. Was that beyond the two-point arc? Yeah, it was. Two free throws coming up, and the clock stops. So the Philippines looking at a seven-point deficit. You don't see it often. If they were to come back and win this game, it's a big if. It would be one of the greatest comebacks, if not the greatest comeback in Asia Cup history. Yeah. I just think that Japan is too stable emotionally right now. I would agree with you. And that, if you start reading the obituary, this one is done deal. Yasuoka, he will seal the deal. A kill shot to end it, 22-12. Japan snatch a spot in the quarterfinals. What a performance. Thomas Kennedy leading the way. Yasuoka providing the finishing touches on a dominant Japan win. There is the final shot. Nothing but you know what. Credit to Team Japan. Credit to the Philippines for showing up. But Japan would have the last word. They win it by 10 points. Somebody's got to get interviewed by the czar. Looks like it's going to be Tomoyo Chai, a.k.a. the worm. Let's get it over to the czar in the 3x3 OG, Tomoyo Ochai. Angelo, it's on you. All right, buddy. Good to see you, first of all. Well, you're not that much younger than me, and you're still out here performing and giving your best. Your effort defensively is tremendous. Tell us, what's your secret recipe for you to still remain at this level of competition? 
Don't be shy now. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, hey, hey. Listen. I love Singapore! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Okay, just uh, so this is a uh, so master note. You can't lose this game. So tough, this game. Uh, Filipino is uh, so tough, guys. You know, body is strong, can't shoot. It's a tough game. But uh, we won, we won that game. I'm happy. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I see you avoiding the question I asked you. You talk about your team because you're such a team player. I'm not mad at you for that. What do you think is the biggest key for you guys going into the knockout round? My body. Well, tell us now about the next round. What do you think your team needs to really focus on to have a chance to qualify um, past the quarterfinal? Uh, our team. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we are great, uh, intensity defense. You know, we have intensity defense. Master Japan style, you know, our just so 10 minutes, don't lose, don't raise it, keep intensity, high energy defense, our style. If we, we can, of course, we are, we are champion. All right, good luck to you for the rest. Get some rest, man. Yeah, thank you. All right, we were just having some fun. And the day is almost done. We have one more contest left. It is up to Australia and India to put a cherry on top of what has been a sweet day of 3x3 action. There's a sweet stroke from you, for you from Yasuoka, one of many for Team Japan en route to that 10-point win. Now the ladies will close the show for the day. Here's how Pool C for the men wrapped up. The very, very dangerous Australians. They top the group at 2-0. Japan do get the win over the Philippines. That secures their spot in day five, Sunday's action. That is tomorrow. And that's where you want to be. A tournament that started with 43 teams. Trimmed to 24 as we entered group play. And group play will officially be done after this next 10-minute sprint. Australia and India will do the honors. We saw Australia open things up with a 22-9 beatdown over New Zealand. And now they'll face off with India, who are not at full strength. A, a shame indeed, because they had played so well in the qualifying draw, but they do not have uh, Keva Singla, who suffered a serious knee injury. And it's really, really dampened uh, their hopes to go far in this, uh, this year's tournament. So we, we weren't being disrespectful by counting them out for this final game. It's just the fact that Australia are the reigning champs. They're playing so well. And the fact that India has three players. So Australia will look to uh, you know, put their pedal to the metal, so to speak. The Gangaroos against an undermanned or under, underwomaned <laughs> under India, <laughs> India team. You know, those, those are to keep things on the up and up. It's all love, all respect. So India coming out with the three players that they've been doing battle with. Anisha Cletus, Mushpa Kumar, and Srikala Rani. There is the trio, still fighting hard for Team India. A lot of props to these ladies here. Giving it their all, they're gonna do their best against the Aussies. But this 
is the team, speaking of Australia, that locks in defensively in a way that you don't see from most teams. Uh, so not only do India have to deal with that pressure defense of gang gang, they got to deal with the offense too. Marina Whittle, I don't know what they're going to do to solve that riddle. It's just, it's just tough, man. And the main thing is I really, really wish that we could have seen this uh, India team full strength. They are, they are deserving. They play well. They're just pretty much unlucky to end up in a group where you have the last year's finalists together. Yeah, that that that's rough. It's like it's kind of like more aggressive than abusive father. Just saying. Hey, no man slander on here with me. <laughs> None of that. See, why why did you say abusive mother? And it works just the same. Uh huh. An abusive parent. There you go. <laughs> I can get with that. All right. The Kangaroos against Team India. Lauren Mansfield opens things up. The last 10 minute sprint of the main draw. Pool play action. They get Gotta the Wilson get out the paint. to Wilson. She was stuck in the paint for too long. This day went by, went by fast, Kyle. It felt that way. Well, like I said, time flies when you're having fun. And I told you that the, the two uh, main draw pool play days were going to go by quick. You sure did. When you start off with 18 games per day in the qualifying draw, 12 is a breeze. And, and the games get even better. The well, intensity yeah. the quality intensifies. There's a, a nice dime dish. Rita Whittle doing the honors. Alex Wilson finishing things off. Whittle recovers the Wilson. She'll get it cleared herself over to Mansfield. All by herself. She could knock it down. Stays one zip. Ronnie up fake. Slides to the left. Misses it left. Dun, dun. Now it's Marina. She cannot get that to go down. Ronnie decides to heave it up. That's the type of shot you take when it's late in the shot clock. She wasn't even a second in. So India is throwing haymakers. So uh, coaching warning, apparently. Can't look at the coaching staff. Can't communicate with the coaching staff. Huh. There's Marina Whittle. Loose ball will go back over to the Aussies. Gangaroos. Continuing to get to it. Whittle will miss it. But not without a foul. Reigning MVP picking up where she left off. Perfectly capable of scoring 10 a game. Perfectly capable. She's been uh, off a little bit. She started off hot the first game, and then she's missed a whole bunch of easy lays or close to the basket attempts. But I, I think she's probably been fouled on most of them. <laughs> Ooh, Ronnie. Uh, you know that Ronnie's got some fighting. For sure. Oh, run up and get done up. The Gagaroo's got shooters like GTA. 5-1. But Kumar is not to be taken for granted down low. She has size advantage. You're in trouble. And Ali Bailey left some debris. Tornadic spin. <laughs> Right back at I you. See, that's been moving again. Yeah, but you might get dizzy, so watch out. <laughs> oh, 8-3. Kumar to the right, the pocket pass out of bounds. But that I talk a lot about Whittle, but Anna Lee Maley, check out this move. Behind the back, I crossover. 
spin move. She did not share the choreography. You missed the step. <laughs> Eight three. Oh, get over here. No. <laughs> We're going to call them the ankle snatchers. <laughs> Matching ankles, not feeling bad about it either. They all had that ability well, it's to just... make that abrupt stop, snatch back. Oh, Emily Maley runs into trouble there. It's an individual now she's talent. got some company on the ground. She's like, get off. Crowd in my space. Two and a half minutes in. India just trying to find the bottom of the net, and they do that Kumar. I like Kumar, man. She, she's been so efficient, knows how to play with her back to the basket, sweet shooting form, efficient. She's put on a great display here. Definitely. There's another step back. This time it's Alex Wilson. And you Too know much protein. You know what's exciting for India, right? What's that? She's 22 years old. Wow. Ronnie, 23 years old. Cletus, 24 years old. So you keep those girls together, add a little experience powder, and uh, you got a team that's going to be contending in the years to come for sure. They already looked that way in the qualifying draw, and unfortunately, and our thoughts are going to uh, Kavya Singler, obviously. Singler, 20 years old, Kyle. So, count yeah. on India for the future. Cletus got a pocket pick. Annalie Maley with the stolen goods. She'll deliver. Down low, Whittle with Cletus all on her back. She'll draw yet another whistle. And that whistle was for a media timeout. Nine to four contest. Marina Whittle will go to the free throw line after this break in the action. And while it is just a five point game, Australia, the favorite in this contest, just get the feeling like it's only a matter of time before they put their foot on the accelerator. And this turns into a 10 point game like that. Money. Travel on the catch. So they give it right back over. Mansfield to Whittle. <laughs> she got her driver's license. Gets to the cup easily, uncontested. She recognized the gap. Ronnie. Let's see if you can run it, run it. The widow will miss it. I, I caught that, by the way. <laughs> I know you would. Oh, stop and go. Man, oh. She got some special sauce. That's homemade. Yeah. What's the secret ing ingredient? I don't know. But I tell you what, the English off the glass, off balance. It's beautiful. You talked about pressing on the gas pedal, and it's plus seven now. Plus eight. eight. Gets it back, scores it, and yeah, I told you I kind of felt like, eh, this game is going to turn at any moment, and all of a sudden that lead is swelled up like a bee sting. But you know why, though? What? Why? You, you kind of know what you're talking about. Well, you know, I, I don't know if I've told you before, but I've made some predictions and things. <laughs> and uh, they've been fairly accurate. I don't know. Kind of, I think six out of seven, something like that. You know, I, I don't brag. Let's see if you get that reference. 13-5 game. I, Kumar. 
if I tell you, I hate to brag, but damn, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know that one. Shaq. Shaq. The, Shaq Dizzle. He said that? That was a song on his album. Oh, no, listen. I, I will never listen to a Shaquille O'Neal rap album. That was a cool song, though. Oh, no, no, no. I would never. I don't, I don't know all the album, but I knew a few tracks. He, he did have one classic, though, the one with Notorious. Can't uh, Stop the Rain. Nope. You never heard that one? I would never. I would never. I wouldn't punish myself by li even listening to Shaq. Even with Notorious B.I.G. Talking to people like this. Rapping over songs like this. Those who grew up. No. You're not going to disrespect B.I.G. though. All right. No, he did one. He did a song with Big. I told you. I just said it. Man. Can't Stop okay. the Rain with B.I.G. Right. I might have to check that out, I man. Tell you, I, but, come on, people in the comment section. Let him know. Fire track. Oh, and okay. if you don't know, thank me later. Hopefully, y'all don't lose respect for me for not knowing that. But listen, can you blame me for not wanting to listen to a Shaq album? Have no, heard not an Shaq? album. A track. If a you track. heard Shaq talk, why would you even want to listen to Shaq rap? Hey, I give you, I give you a challenge. Just commentate the last five minutes with Shaq voices. <laughs> no, I couldn't punish our, our viewers and listeners like that. But I might be able to do a Charles Barkley. Oh, you got oh, the turbo. Shut the hell up, Kenny. Can you oh, give us the God. turbo? That's terrible. It's just That's terrible. just terrible. It's terrible. See, first of all, see, first of all, 14-5. Uh, just make sure you repeat yourself and never finish up sentences. Right. Then you're really and, accurate. And <laughs> make several different points and say first of all after each one of them. Exactly. And never finish your point. It Whittle. should be third or fourth of all after. <laughs> 15-5. As always, Kyle Montgomery, right? Less huh? than five minutes left. What? I said, like always, you're right. Oh, yeah, well, I should have predicted the score. You know, Zar, you, your numbers of, of accuracy are pretty, pretty good. There's only one game where you, uh, I think you said Hong Kong was going to beat India or something. <laughs> I think that was the only one I was like, oh, oh. That's, that was a little far out there. You, you're, you're kind of a crook, man. I can't. It was that one. There was a couple of over and unders that you, I think you missed, uh, you missed the mark on. I can't now. with you, man. I can't. You're a crook. Good thing for me. The archives are in my favor. You get in there, well. Ah, oh, Kumar. Slick move. She, she's one of my um, coup de curve that we say in French. The oh, spinning around, fading away. MJ. She's, that was beautiful. Yes. Oh, Alex Wilson uh, changed her kicks. She got the Grinches on this time. But she still got the Kobe's. Oh, those, those, those are clean. Yeah, Lake of Colors. You know what model? No. These are the fives right before. Right oh, before the sixes. Her shoe game is crazy. And you're gonna tell me why do I know so much about the Kobe's? Because I played in them so many years. I like Anna Lee Mainly's joints too. I don't know what those are. Uh, these are the um, Yonescu's. Oh, so the Sabrinas? Yeah, I believe. Oh yeah, I like those too. Oh, Alex Wilson in overdrive. Fast and Furious, 17-7. Ronnie, changing direction. Mansfield will track it down. Alex Wilson with the step back. Maley skies for the rebound, can't get it. There you go, great shot. Gotta take those. Now it's Mansfield, ISO game. Mansfield, out to Wilson. Wilson decides to drive. Drops it off. Anna Lee denied at the front door. Great interior defense from Kumar. Playing it to the final horn. That's all you can ask for. It is a 10-point lead for Australia. This game likely to end soon, but India not going out without a fight. Wilson should have taken that shot. Driving, kicking. You can't overdrive it. Sometimes you just got to take what's available to you. I have a question, Kyle, a uh, lexical question. What I call coup de coeur in French, which means that someone left a, a, a lasting impression on you. Mm -hmm. And you 
How do you say it? Coup de coeur? Coup de coeur. Like it's, coup a, de coeur. it's a hit in your heart kind of thing. That's what we call it. And uh -huh. it's, um, it's, it's uh, someone that le left a very lasting positive impression on you. How, how do you call that in English? I, I know you have a term for that. Someone that left a lasting impression. Yeah. Yeah, someone that left a lasting impression and uh, as if you, you were making up a list of the people that you wanted to give a, a shout out to, like honorable mentions, is that something you'd say? Uh, well, an honorable mention is just somebody that, that did a good job that's worth mentioning. And I, I kind of get what you're saying. It relates to India, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kumar, yes. Ronnie. Uh, they, they, they're certainly worthy of an honorable mention uh, for this tournament, even though they, they won't be advancing past today. But they left an impression on him. That's the subtlety of language. Each language have those little sayings that make so much sense, but you cannot really translate it in another one. That's all right. I get what you mean. We on the same page. Eighteen to seven. These teams, some due to injury. Not the same Ooh. playing court. Tough. All right, Mansfield. Got Why isn't Wilson shooting that rock as she gets it? She's hesitating a bit too much. Well, she, she doesn't like the four shots. Well, she's wide open, and Mansfield keep on uh, driving and kicking to her, and she's kind of refusing. She's like being too unselfish maybe or too patient. Looking for like an even better shot, but you know 12 seconds go by so fast. You got to take the good options as they come to you. Cletus, that one too strong. Alex Wilson lost it inside. There's a foul on India. That's seven. So Henley Maley will shoot a couple. Mainly, who does a little bit of it all uh, for this Gangaroo squad. Former WNBA -er with the Chicago Sky just two seasons ago. And she cashes in on the second of two. Loose ball coming right at you, Angelo. I was ready to shoot, man. I was ready. Final couple minutes of pool play action. Coming to a close here with India in a hole they will not be able to dig themselves out of. They're in gang territory. Gangaroo territory, that is. Oh, whoa. She wanted that one. It rolls off the rim instead of in the rim, but still two free throws. Alex Wilson. She could finish it with this one. One more is all it will take. And that is the end of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, 21-7. Another dominant performance from the Gangaroos. India will head back home and regroup for next year. They did not have the option of having a substitute due to the unfortunate, unfortunate injury of Kavya Singla. So a tip of the cap to Team India. Just an uh, unfortunate incident for them. And a tip of the cap to Gangaroos as well. Team Australia. Man, the men and women, they look tough. Meantime, let's get it over to Angelo Sagarakis, who's standing by with Marina Whittle after the W. Undefeated as they continue to defend their goal from 2023. Angelo. Yeah. Agree. How you doing, Marina? Yeah, I'm good. It's good to get back with the girls. Obviously, we had a really good year last year and just going to build off that. And like, we came out and we were tested and getting used to playing together again and in the bright lights and in the stadium. It was, um, it was good. Feeling good. 
So I have a question. Seeing how you handled New Zealand, that is one of the dark horses in this competition and obviously a team that you met up at the highest level last year in this cup. In the end, can we say that the biggest enemy for Australia in this competition is Australia? Uh, sorry, you said the biggest was for New Zealand. Your biggest enemy is yourself, pretty much. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, our biggest enemy across the board, we feel we've got a rivalry with New Zealand and with China, so we're very excited to see them, hopefully. Um, but yeah, there's always an intense rivalry with New Zealand. They are cousins, we always want to do well against them, and it's always a battle, like you've seen. So, you're feeling that the heat can play a factor, or <laughs> being sweaty is something you're okay with? Personally, I sweat the most on the team, so for me, it's every day. But um, yeah, getting used to the heat, the sweat, the ball, it's um, definitely an extra challenge, but we'll rise to it. I'm looking forward to it. All right, good luck for tomorrow and get some rest. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, that is the reigning MVP, Marina Whittle. All business, no business suit necessary. You can see it between the lines. The Gangaroos looking strong, headed into the final day of play. They make easy work of India in another blowout win. We will see them tomorrow as we will see the Australian men as well. We're going to show you the brackets and show you the matchups and get you all set for the final day of play here in Singapore 2024. Enjoy the rest of the moving pictures, and then we will get you set up for what you will see tomorrow. Stick around. It won't be going long. So, as we get ready to turn off the lights on our pool play competition, we will show you how things fared in pools D and B for the women today in A and C. Of course, the Australians make an easy work of New Zealand and India. And officially solidifying our quarterfinal brackets. That, uh, there's a shot of the city. But here's how the day began. Started with, with a thriller between Iran and China. Had some good ones today. Had some blowouts as well. Japan with that, uh, that narrow win. First game of the day over Iran. New Zealand ran into a very dangerous Aussie team, you saw. Here are your men's quarterfinal teams, Iran against Japan, New Zealand, Thailand, Mongolia against Qatar, and Australia against China. Meantime, for the women, we will see China and Mongolia. We'll see Australia and Thailand, Japan going to get against New Zealand and the Philippines against Chinese Taipei. These are your top eight teams remaining competing for three medals at this 2024 edition of the Asia Cup. It will all be settled tomorrow. We're gonna see who's on a gold rush indeed. We'll join you at 11 local time for the final day of play. Angelo, get some rest tonight. I will. All right, y'all have a good night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 local for the final day. Peace out.